The most unique part of the Smash Bros. series, which makes it unique from traditional fighting games, is the aspect of knockback. Most players of the game have an intuitive sense of how this mechanic works, but there is a hefty amount of math and physics behind the in-game knockback engine that most players don't know about. In this video, beginner, intermediate, and advanced knockback topics in Smash Ultimate will be discussed in depth. So get your notebooks out, because class is in session with today's lesson, Knockback. Knockback in Smash Ultimate is a concept that all avid players have an instinctual understanding of how it works. Obviously, it's based on damage, weight, and the strength of an attacking move. But how exactly and formulaically do all these variables work together in order to create the formula for Smash Ultimate Knockback? For many players researching the topic, the proposed formula for Knockback in this game is this absurd formula. But by actually taking the time to understand it, it becomes a lot more digestible and actually makes perfect sense. The specifics of each variable will be discussed later. But as for now, for what they represent, P is the current percent of the character receiving the Knockback which will now be referred to as the target. D is the damage of the attack dealt. W is the character's weight. S, the knockback scaling value of the move. B is the move's base knockback. And R is a term that refers to various factors, which will be discussed later. All the numerical values in the formula were calculated by the development team through tons of testing in order to ensure that this formula outputs data in a function that models their proposed knockback values. After inputting all these values into the formula, its solution is a value in arbitrary units of knockback, which the game recognizes and proceeds to send the target at a vector, of which its magnitude is the knockback value, and the direction is the angle of which the connecting hitbox sends. As for the formula's variables themselves, some are a lot more self-explanatory than others. The most simple of these is P, the target's percent, which is taken directly from the character portrait at the bottom of the screen, with a few more significant figures that the game code stores. The D variable corresponds to the attack's damage, which is determined by the value assigned to each hitbox of each move in the game. However, this is not without complication, as the D variable takes into effect the staling and freshness bonus, therefore making the formula really D equals D1 times 0.3 the staling bonus times 0.3 the freshness bonus. The weight variable W is the target's weight which is a value that is specific to each character and helps make Pichu the lightest character with a W value of 62 and Bowser the heaviest with W being 135. S is the knockback growth or knockback scaling. This value is an inherent value to each hitbox in the game and accounts for the rate at which knockback increases with damage. B is the attack's base knockback, which is the knockback that the attack would send an opponent at 0%, which is also inherent to each hitbox in the game. Finally, R, the most complicated variable of the bunch, which accounts for many factors such as launch rate, crouch canceling, rage, frozen effect, size changes, and much more. Not much is known about how this variable works specifically, but it's treated as the error variable in our understanding of the subject. While characters are sent forward with this knockback, there must be some sort of opposing force in the character that will stop them before they hit the blast zone for moves that don't kill. Since knockback is just a single initial vector and not a continual multiplier to the character's position, the variable known as launch speed assists with this. After the knockback value is determined, the game then determines another value, launch speed, by multiplying the knockback value by 0.03 in order to convert the arbitrary value of knockback into a unified value of launch speed in distance per frame. This speed then decreases by 0.015 every frame until the horizontal speed reaches zero and the character begins moving only down or until the character hits the ground due to their fast falling speed and gravity. Each character's air traction values are disabled for this problem, resulting in a simple kinematic solution. Now, to complicate the problem, we take it a step up and combine two knockback vectors and examine how the game works with these. This, in-game, is known as knockback stacking, and while it rarely occurs in singles, it is possible, such as with Robin's Arc Thunder into Smash Attack or Witch Time combos. 
but it happens all the time in doubles. Internally, this mechanic does not occur if two knockbacks come from the same source. This will make it seem impossible to occur in singles, but there are some exceptions. For example, while if Kazuya hits an electric when Godfist, and then Ford Air while the character is in the EWGF's knockback, the Ford Air would take priority, since it was hit later. But with objects such as projectiles, bayonet and smash attacks, and interestingly Fox's side B, these count as different entities entirely, and can result in knockback stacking. Furthermore, for knockback stacking to occur, the combined launch speed must be less than 0.8 times the initial launch speed of the first hits, but must not exceed 2.65 times the seconds, or else it's ignored. When two knockback stacking applicable vectors connect, they need to determine the new direction and magnitude of the stacked vector. As for the angle, this is calculated by first adding the two vectors together like normal, which is done by taking the ratio of the vertical to horizontal components of these new vectors, and finally taking the inverse tangent of this value to determine the new angle. This does mean that stacking is impossible for opposing horizontal values. As for the magnitude, it is done component-wise. The result is a vector that is the combined knockback value. There are three variations of knockback that are really heavy alterations of the typical knockback formula. These are set knockback, weight independent knockback, and no knockback. All these are fairly simple, but are slight variations on the standard rule. The first of these, set knockback, is the name for a move's knockback when it sends the target a set or fixed distance away, no matter any of the variables discussed before. For these moves, consider the S, knockback scaling term, to be set to zero, and the R set to one, to give K the knockback equal to B. Typically, this is used in multi-hit moves so that the target stays in the move prior to the final knockback hit. However, this is not always the case, and moves such as Mii Sword Fighter's Tornado come into mind, as well as PSI Magnet from Ness and Joker's Rebel's Guard. As for weight independent knockback, this is also not that complicated, but a variation of the rule. This is quite similar to set knockback, but these moves do not have a knockback scaling set to zero, but rather have a non-zero variable like normal. Instead, the W, weight variable, is set to 100 for all characters, which means that everyone is around Cloud and Mii Sword Fighter's weight. These moves are typically used for combo starters, but was famously used in Mithra's Lightning Buster prior to its removal in a patch. Other moves with these properties are Bayonetta's Heel Slide, Afterburner Kick, Witch Twist, Ivysaur's Bullet Seed, and Lucas's Down Tilt. Finally, we have moves with no knockback, which as the name implies, has no knockback. These moves have K set to zero, such as Fox's Laser, Piranha Plant's Poison Breath, and Mario and Dr. Mario's Capes. Walls, bouncing off walls, and teching off walls are all a key part to the competitive game on certain stages. However, knockback is greatly affected by these immovable obstacles. When a character in knockback collides with a wall, they get a 5% knockback reduction post-collision. If this occurs, the character is stage spiked and set at an angle perpendicular to the surface of which they collide with, at the given knockback value. However, it's possible to tech these scenarios and avoid these occurrences for the most part. But, sometimes unteckables occur. These happen when a character is too much knockback and collides with a wall, which will show a red spark and not give the opportunity for a tech, therefore making the collision unteckable. One of the least understood and most mysterious topics in all of Smash are the red sparks and final zoom when taking stocks. While most of the time these occur when a move does KO, sometimes either the move KOs without red sparks or a move with red sparks does not kill. This is because the red sparks calculations are actually based on the distance to the blast zone rather than the knockback value required to get there. In addition, the red sparks are calculated to start showing a few percent after the move will typically kill, which accounts for the times where the move kills and the sparks do not show. On the other end, DI can account for the times when the move shows the sparks and it does not kill. DI, as one of the most common aspects in the competitive scene, stands for directional influence, and is the directional influence of a move's knockback by holding the control stick in a certain direction to prolong a stock. 
Interestingly, DI does not affect the knockback directly, but rather the launch speed. As the control stick is held upward, the launch speed can increase by a factor of 1.095, whereas if it's held down, it can do the same by 0.92. This, in turn, affects the direction of the knockback by allowing it to have more or less effect on the trajectory. Another aspect that has a relation to knockback is tumble. This is a mechanic that was a lot more prominent to the competitive scene in Smash 4, where untechables were much more common, and related to the tumble effect, but it still has a strong impact on Smash Ultimate with certain characters. Tumble is the state where a player is sent into a spiraling corkscrew motion after being hit with a certain knockback level. The two most prominent implications in the current game are character specific. Little Mac loses his KO punch after being sent into tumble, and Luma will die once the same is done to him offstage. Mathematically, tumble only occurs when the knockback value is above a certain, currently unknown, threshold. Armor, both heavy and super, both are heavily affected by knockback. Discussed briefly in this video, once a character is in the frames of a move where super armor is active, they will take no knockback, such as with DK's giant punch neutral B. As for heavy armor, this armor gives no knockback when the knockback value is under a certain move-specific threshold. Once this is exceeded, knockback occurs as normal, which happens in moves such as Terry's Buster Wolf. The final advanced knockback mechanic is Rage. Introduced in Smash 4, it is currently one of the most important factors in the knockback formula, calculated by being in the R variable. Rage is calculated by the formula, Rage equals 1 plus P minus 35 over 115 times 0.15, where P is the attacker's percent. As the attacker's percent increases past 35% and up to 150%, the knockback value is multiplied by 1 to 1.15%. This means that the higher percent a character is, the more knockback they will give and the stronger they will be. Knockback is the glue that holds Smash Bros. together, and is the primary mechanic behind the series, the one that makes it unique from traditional fighting games. While it may seem pretty simple, and most players have an intuitive sense of the mechanic, there's a lot more math and physics behind Knockback than people might think. Thank you for watching the video, and I hope you learned something new about Knockback. If you enjoyed this new, mathematical style of video, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments. Thanks again, and as always, let's go Islanders.